What's up everyone? It's another fantastic day here at Upstreet and I'm thrilled to see you. And you are uh, looking pretty great. It's almost like you're made in God's image. Oh wait, you were. And that means that you are full of creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Here's something else that's really cool about creativity. It has no limits. God's creativity is limitless which we can see whenever we look at the amazing world he created. Think about it. Have you ever seen the exact same sunset? If you look closely, each sunset is different with different strokes of color, and it's like God's painting the sky with his unlimited imagination. Or what about the clouds? Have you ever noticed how they're never the same? They're always moving and they're always changing. Have you ever played the cloud game where you stare at the clouds and you try to figure out what kind of shapes that they look like? Sometimes they can look like animals or they can look like mountains, really all kinds of things. And that's because God is creative and he's amazing and he's wonderful. Our memory verse for this month reminds us of that truth. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Our God is truly indescribable. With God's help, we can be creative and do good works for others. We can trust that he will be there to help us along the way. We can also trust him no matter what. His plans for our lives are beyond anything we can imagine for ourselves. And that, is just a testament to how creative God is. So now let's check in with Pastor Mikkel because I have a fun little invention that I think I created and I think he's going to like it. So let's go ahead and show him. Hey, Pastor Mikkel, how are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Um, I have this fun little thing I wanted to show you. So because we're focusing on creativity, I thought nothing is more creative than, you know, embarking on making inventions, especially, you know, inventions that can help others. So what do you think? You think I can show you my newest invention? Yeah, I'd love to see it. I have one too. I'd love to show you, but by all means, go first. Oh, great. I'm excited. Okay. So for the first one, I was thinking, picture this, it's late and you are running late. You know, because you want to sleep in. We all yeah. sleep in, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so you're rushing, and then you pick up the brush buddy. Look at that. Exactly. What does that do? So the brush buddy is you're rushing, you're trying to get ready, but you need to brush your teeth, and you need to brush your hair. So you can quickly brush your teeth, you know, for the two minutes you're supposed um. to, and then brush your hair. And so it's all in one. All no, no, no messing around with multiple brushes. You just, you grab the one thing and yeah, what a time saver. Great idea. Very. And then, catch this, you run downstairs and your parents make you a bowl of cereal. And so then you can use the cereal, the cereal spoon 2000. Cereal spoon 2000. Wow. Okay. How does that work? And so you can eat your cereal like this, but then once it gets to the end, the milk, you know, you want to finish it. So then you can just drink it. Just yeah, and you don't have to like pick up the bowl and drink it out. Yeah, no, yeah. it's great. Yep, just trying to make yeah. life easier for people. These, these are great. These, these are both great inventions for me because uh, on any given morning, my, my favorite parts are going to be sleeping in and eating cereal. So. That really checks a couple boxes for me. Great inventions, I love them. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so my invention, I think, uh, so I only have one, but I think that its ingenuity really kind of makes up for for the, the lack of, of numbers. It's, it's quality uh, before quantity. So uh, here we go. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm outside right now. Uh, it's the summer months, it's hot outside. Um, people are trying to, uh, you know, do the physical distancing so they're, uh, you know, doing outdoor activities, they're hiking, they're going to the beach, they're doing outdoor sports. And it's August, it's the hottest time of year, so people are getting sweaty. We're outside working up a sweat, the sun's beating down on you, and what do you do? You go, man, I really, really wish I was inside, but I enjoy being outside. So I'm combining the best parts of the great outdoors with the best parts of the great indoors air-conditioned clothing. Wow. 
That, yep. That's and, amazing. <laughs> yep. I know, right? So all you do is, uh, you know, I'm outside and I'm like, oh, God, it's so, so hot. Oh, I need to cool off. I'm going to push this little button, this discreet button inside my pocket and... Ooh, wow. It's a little... Oh, it's a little loud. Really? What? It's just a little loud. I can't hear you. I can't hear you what? Yeah, it's, it's just loud. I can't hear you. It's still too loud. Let me, um... I'm going to turn that off. What were you saying? You know, it's just a little loud, so I'm not sure how practical it could be. Could you could you, could you hear it? Yeah, just yeah. Mm-hmm. I was worried about that. I was worried about it maybe the the sound being a a little distracting. Yeah, um, we can iron out the details of that because I think it's a great idea. And so, yeah. how about the kids? They can go ahead and watch the Bible story. We can kind of talk through ways we can. Yeah, will you help me? Will you help me brainstorm? Because I think yeah. I think the I think the core concept is good. I just think we got to kind of tweak the details you know what i mean exactly exactly all right Perfect. sounds good all yeah. right you guys enjoy the bible story and we're gonna work on this okay with one more stroke of my shopping voila magnifique my self-portrait is complete Mwah! 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 Oh. Hey guys, didn't see you there. It's me, Jacob. Wait until you see my masterpiece. It's, in a word, indescribable. Oh. Wait, can you tell which one is even the real me? It, yeah, we even have, we have the same smile. Okay. Maybe painting's not my thing, but that doesn't mean I'm not filled with creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. So even though I may not be a very gifted portraitist, clearly, I am still a masterpiece. I'm smiling mysteriously because no one knows I put salt in the sugar bowl. (coughs) (coughs) But really, I'm a masterpiece because I was made by God. And you know what else? You are a masterpiece because you were made by God. The creator of the entire universe took the time to paint you. And you are unique. You have unique fingerprints and toe prints and a unique tongue print. So what does that mean for you now that you know you're a masterpiece? What do we do now? You'll find out in today's story. See you in a few. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, I'll just hang here on the wall cause I'm just a a painting. Okay, this this, this is getting creepy, right? Is this creepy or funny? No, it's creepy. This is creepy, I'm sorry. This is creepy. There was a man who wrote a lot of the books we find in the Bible, specifically in the New Testament. His name was Paul. Paul didn't always believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but once he did decide to put his trust in Jesus, Paul traveled all over the place to teach people and to encourage them to follow Jesus too. One of the towns he visited was the Greek city of Ephesus. Paul started a church in Ephesus and later he went back to stay there for several years. The believers in Ephesus were from a different background. Some were Jews and some weren't. The one thing they all had in common though was that they believed in Jesus. Paul was so bold telling others about Jesus that actually got him in trouble with the Roman government. In fact, he ended up in jail because he used that time in jail in a creative way. He wrote letters to churches that he started and he wanted believers to know how important they were to God, no matter where they came from. One of the letters Paul wrote was to the people in Ephesus, the Ephesians. In this letter, Paul talked about how important it was for believers to get along with each other. He reminded them that God created us to do good things for others. 
Listen to what he wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. There's a lot of great truth here, so let's dig a little deeper together. Take a look at the verse again. The first part says that we are what? We are God's creation. He made us in his image. He made us to be like him. And that's what we read last week in the very first book of the Bible, that God created human beings in his own likeness. So if we're created in God's image and God is creative, then that means we can be creative too. Let's go ahead and explore some different ways that we can be creative. You have music, cooking, baking, art, painting, solving problems, writing, designing, science, dancing, comedy. Now, let's go back to what Paul said in his letter. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Look at the second sentence. God created us to what? Right, he created us to belong to Jesus. When we put our trust in Jesus as our savior, we begin a relationship with Jesus that changes the way we see the world. We begin to see the world as he does. We see the needs of others around us. We end that we want to do something to help those people. Before we do any good works though, we need to take time to see the things that people around us might need. So let's explore some of those needs. People may need food, friendship, laughter, maybe when they're feeling sad, they need money, if they are bored, uh, encouragement, if they're having a bad day, uh, an offer to help them if they're feeling stress. So those are some needs that people may have. So let's go back to Paul's words one more time. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Did you hear that last part? Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. God has given us different ways that we can be creative. We need to pay attention so that we can see the needs of the people around us. Then we can use our creativity to do something to help. All we need is to look around and we can see the good works that God has prepared for us to do. So here's the big question. How can we use our creativity to help others? Send an encouraging note. Write letters to a retirement community. Write a play about your younger sibling. Tell a joke to someone who's sad. Share your toys or your lunch. Bake cookies for a sick friend. Donate clothes to someone who doesn't have a lot. Help with chores around the house. Be a friend to someone new. I love this. Look at all the awesome art that we've made together today by imagining how we can use our creativity to do good works for the people around us. That's what God created us to do. Can you imagine if we all use our creativity to help others? The world would be such a better place and the people would see and feel God's love through us. God created you so that you can be creative. Remember, the creativity that God gives us isn't just about art and music. He designed you in a unique way to love him and to love others. The Apostle Paul wrote, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Whoa, that's a lot. We are God's creation. Yeah, we covered that. You are a masterpiece of God, created in His image. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. We were created to have a relationship with God, and that's only possible because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So, what do we do now? Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Now we can do good works. You were created, designed, shaped to use what God has given you to do good things and love other people. The question is, how will you use your creativity to do that? 
Maybe you're an artiste, or maybe you're creative in some other ways. You can solve a complicated math problem, or design the best doghouse ever, or you're a peacekeeper, and you can creatively help people work through an argument. There are so many different ways to be creative, and I know you're creative, because God made you in His image, and no one's more creative than Him. So here's the thing to remember today. God created you so you can be creative. If you know where you're most creative, find ways to use your creativity to do good things. Make people happy or make a difference in the world. If you're not sure where you're creative, you just gotta look a little bit closer. Think about what you like to do. Or ask a parent or someone you trust what creative things they see in you. And no matter what, Ask God to show you how to use your creativity in the best way. Be the masterpiece he created you to be. I reckon that's about all there is to say about that. I reckon you're right. I wonder if I could use this pitchfork here to roast three marshmallows at the same time. I'll see you next time, I reckon. God made us so that we would belong to Jesus. In fact, that's why Jesus came to be our Savior, so we could have a relationship with God. God created us, and He made us in His image. That means we can be creative too. We can use our creativity that comes from Him. God created you so you can be creative. Say that with me. God created you so you can be creative. What are some ways that you can be creative? Can you solve problems? Are you good at math or reading? Do you always notice what others need and figure out ways to help? Do you have a gift to write or paint or sing that you can use to encourage other people? Every single one of us in here is creative because every single one of us is made in God's image. Think about the things that you like to do, the things that you're just naturally good at. Maybe ask a parent or a grandparent what they see in you. You can pray about it too and ask God to show you new ways that you can use your creativity, your creativity that can help the people around you. And let's go ahead and pray together. Please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for not only making us, but also for sharing your creativity with us. We see that we can use your creativity everywhere, and it makes us want to be creative too. Help us to do our best with all the gifts you've given us, from making art and music to solving problems and helping others. Help us to see how we can use our creativity to meet the needs of the people around us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Up Street, it's been a great time talking about creativity with you all. And speaking of creativity, don't forget that tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, after we watch the So and So show, we are going to be having a creativity show and tell. These are going to be all things that you've worked on throughout the week, and we are so excited to see all of them. And don't forget about our Thursday night hangout trivia game. Woo woo! And we dance a little too. So that's fun. And yeah, I'm so excited to see you all tomorrow and see all your creative things. And I hope you guys have a great week. Bye. I love you guys. <laughs>